Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner Canna Campbell. Before we launch into today's video, I want to give you three quick reminders. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and that notification bell is switched on. Every Thursday I upload a fresh video for you. Number two, make sure you are also subscribed to my podcast. Yes, that's right. I actually have a podcast. I launched it in June. It has been going absolutely mental. Uh, it's The podcasts go for about between 30 to 40 minutes and it's a fantastic platform because I can talk about financial strategies in so much more detail and I have the most powerful conversations with everyday people about how they've overcome their own financial challenges and setbacks. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast which gets published every Monday morning so you start the week on a fresh motivated note. And then the third thing is of course, Goes without saying, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Sugar Mama TV because I create so much additional daily content for you. All right, today's video, we're talking about financial goals, but my financial goals. I'm really aware that I'm always grilling you guys about the importance of having a financial goal. So often when I meet someone, particularly if I'm doing a Zoom consultation with someone, you know, they're like, oh, I'm just drifting through life or I'm not going anywhere or, you know, I'm going backwards. I'll ask them what their financial goal is and they'll be dumbfounded. It's like, well, I, 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 I guess to get better with money. I'm like, no, 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 a proper goal, a goal that's defined, articulated, give me a deadline, a proper line in the sand, concrete deadline, such as the 15th of December, 2021 or you know, and they don't, they're missing this. It is so important that you have a financial goal in your life because when we have a goal, particularly an important, valuable, exciting goal, we spring out of bed with so much more energy, pizzazz and excitement to embrace it. We don't feel like we're ever making any sacrifices because it's not really a sacrifice because it means we're going to potentially achieve that goal sooner or achieve that goal, you know, at a higher rate or a higher number or in a better, more efficient way. It helps, I guess, recalibrate us and ground us and give a sense of value and perspective again. So if you don't have a financial goal, I highly recommend that you start thinking about having some of your own financial goals. And my word of wisdom around financial goals is don't have too many, keep it nice and simple so that you're not overloaded and overwhelmed. And another little cheeky hack with financial goals is you want them to be a stretch, but you don't want them to be excessive or outrageous because you won't take them seriously and you won't give them a, a really good go but just go easy on yourself because it's like kind of learning how to swim you've got to like learn your strokes first and learn how to float before you can start like doing butterfly and backstroke through the water all right so today i want to share with you some of my personal financial goals and the financial goals for my family all right so the first goal is around our mortgage so tom and i bought our home about 10 months ago and we've made a goal together to try and pay off the whole entire mortgage in 10 years or less. Now, I get this. This is a really ambitious goal. But we run some numbers. We were very careful in not borrowing too much, even though it felt scary at the time. And making sure that we have, you know, our expenses and our priorities on track. So together, we're working really hard to make sure that we knock off our mortgage as quickly as possible. Even though we were on a 30 year loan that the bank put us on, we refused to follow that prescription. I'm not going to have my bank tell me when I'm going to pay off my home loan. I'm going to beat them at their own game. I'm going to pay it off and I'm going to save tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of interest. And more importantly, I'm going to get time back for my family. Goal number two is around our mindful money number. Now, if you haven't read my book, Mindful Money, I highly recommend you do if you're serious about your financial well-being. But your mindful money number is how much passive income you are building in your life in order to become financially free or to be able to take your foot off the gas and maybe work part time or uh, maybe retire sooner or maybe pay for that annual international holiday every year. So our mindful money number, and this is, I guess, scary to share with you, is $200,000 a year between Tom and I. We've worked out that if we had a, a passive income, a net passive income each year coming in, that means that we can really cut back on work and we can still maintain our family's living expenses and we can still have the important things that matter to us in our life, particularly around travel and having a healthy lifestyle. And also most importantly, having time, having time to be able to spend 
with our children and with our friends. The third financial goal that I'm going to share with you is more of an immediate one, but it's an ongoing one. And that is to make sure that we are both putting the maximum that we can afford to into our superannuation accounts. Now, Tom and I are both self-employed, which means we don't have our employers paying, you know, the standard 9.5% per financial year into our superannuation. It's completely on our own shoulders and we need to make sure that we do this ourselves. Now, the maximum we are allowed to contribute to our superannuation accounts per financial year is $25,000 each. So we are both doing the best we possibly can to really go up to that maximum limit as we possibly can. But for us, superannuation is also going to be a very important source of our financial well-being and independence because it's going to help contribute towards our mindful money number. The fourth financial goal that I want to share with you is actually a couple and it's actually about my own personal financial affairs. When Tom and I met, we were both completely financially independent of each other. But when we... Uh, had our daughter we decided to draw a line in the sand and you know what Tom has built is purely his what I have built is purely mine but you know assuming we remain together as a couple of course we we pull everything together so investments that I've accumulated and the income that comes off those will be pulled in together to help pay for towards our mindful money number and the same for Tom however I really feel it's important for individuals particularly women to have obviously joint family financial goals, but also have something of your own that you're working on, that you're really proud of, that you're really building. I have a YouTube video actually about this and I have a couple of podcasts about this. So I will link them in the video description box below because they're really helpful and they're really powerful. So my individual financial goals on top of the mortgage, building our mindful money number, um, and obviously making the most of our superannuation is also obviously number one, keep going with a thousand dollar project. I really hope that the income from the thousand dollar project can, can continue to go towards World Vision's the thousand goal project, but I need to keep working on it. I need to keep building it. I need to help keep using the thousand dollar project to help educate people around investing and being mindful with their money. The second financial goal of mine, which is a personal one, is making sure that my investments continue to remain cash flow positive. When you're building your mindful money number, it's important that your investments are actually putting money into your pocket. There's no point creating a passive income stream of $80,000 a year if it costs you $80,000 a year in interest and loan repayments. So I am slowly and steadily working, actually all the time, on making sure that my investments and the, the investment loans are coming down over time and that those investments are more than paying for themselves. The income from those investments are number one, covering the interest and number two, actually reducing the principal, that is reducing the investment loan over time. And I want to make sure that those loans are all paid off or being close to paid off in time for us to achieve our mindful money number because the income from some of those investments excluding the $1,000 project, will go towards our $200,000 mindful money number. And then the fifth financial goal that I'm going to share with you guys is actually around balance and budget. Obviously, making sure that we stick to our budget so that we can continue on paying off our mortgage as quickly as possible. We can continue on putting as much as we can afford to in our superannuation accounts. We can continue on affording to be able to invest and build our mindful money number. So making sure that our budget helps us keep some healthy boundaries in place, but also have balance. You know, so many people assume that I am someone who is super frugal, super mean, and a bit of a tight ass. That actually couldn't be further from the truth. I'm all about balance, making sure that we, you know, achieve or prioritize achieving our financial goals and then we reward ourselves both tom and i particularly tom love you know it's spending money on experiences uh, whether it be in a new restaurant or whether it be on a holiday or a weekend away or just like doing something fun and special with our children we really value experiences that's what uh, what our value system is and that's what enriches our life so our fifth financial goal is obviously using our budget and sticking to it but always allowing a really healthy sense of balance and of course that balance does involve rewards but we always make sure that we get those rewards 
when we have prioritized our financial goals and we have achieved them as well as our other lifestyle goals, of course. Now, on that note of financial goals, I want to let everyone know that I have a particular podcast that talks about financial goals, how I set them, how I review them, how I tweak them, how I adjust them, and how I reward myself along the way. So I highly recommend checking the link in the video description box below because you will love this podcast. It's definitely one of the most popular podcasts I've ever made. Now, for anyone who's looking at their financial goals thinking, yep, I need to get on board with what Canna's talking about. This sounds really meaningful. This sounds like it's going to add a lot of value to my life. Well, I highly recommend you grab a copy of Mindful Money because I have a couple of chapters dedicated to helping you make sure that you set amazing, powerful and exciting goals, not society's financial goals, but your own financial goals. And if you already have some financial goals, I recommend that you always review them. You check them. You see how you're tracking, see how you're monitoring, make a note as to how you're going. So you know that your debts are coming down. You know that your passive income is going up. Your investment portfolio is growing. Your overall financial wealth and independence is becoming more and more secure every single day. So track and monitor. Make a note of where you stand financially and check in a month later, three months later, six months later, a year later. You'll be amazed to see how much you can achieve and how much you can grow in a very, very short period of time and when you do this properly you actually realize how incredibly powerful you really are in achieving your goals and of course once you achieve those goals don't be afraid to adjust them to tweak them to stretch further to make them slightly harder or more challenging or if you need to make them slightly easier and go you know take the foot off the gas for a little bit in your life while other things are going on that is also perfectly fine and perfectly healthy the important thing is i really want you guys to have a meaningful and exciting financial goal in your life and hopefully by me sharing with you what we are doing with our finances in helping build financial wealth and independence for us it inspires you to go and set up some meaningful and exciting ones for yourself and for your family all right everyone thank you so much for listening I will see you next Thursday for more videos on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to make sure you're subscribed, you're following me on Instagram, and you are subscribed to my podcast for every Monday morning. All right, ciao for now.